Jan Ulrich and Lance Armstrong created the most epic duel in the history of Tour de France. They were sharing podium four times and Ulrich was the only one who Lance really feared. Jan was a combination of exceptional talent and hard work. I wish he would have tried to beat the legendary one hour record in his prime. But let's go back to the year 1997. Deutsche Telekom team is preparing themselves to make a huge performance at Tour de France. Jan is no longer a prospect, but serious contender who already won the young rider classification the year before. He is like a German V2 rocket, ready to launch. However, there can be only one king in Deutsche Telekom, Bjarne Ries. During interviews before the race, 10 years younger Ulri was trying to be loyal and saying Bjarne is our captain, it's all about him, we will get him to another title. But he also added, if something happened to Bjarne, things might change. The whole situation was kind of similar to what was happening in Team Astana in 2009, where the final battle for the leadership between Contador and Armstrong took place during the race. The tension inside the team was clear from the very first stage. A group accident 11 kilometers before the finish divided the peloton. Ulrich stayed in the leading group, but Ries fell back to the second group a minute behind. The whole telecom team waited for the defending champ to help him finish the race strong. Ulrich was the only exception. He was given the green light by the team director to stay in the leading group. Ries was not happy about this decision. However, till stage 10, Bjorn was official team leader with about 30 seconds lost to Ulrich. Things changed definitely after he dropped with 8 kilometers left on a climb to Arcale. Fortunately, his team spirit was stronger than his ego when he told to Jan, if you feel strong, go. Ulrich got clear confirmation from the team director who said, you are the leader now, then caught up with Pantani and Virenk and soon left both excellent climbers behind. Ulrich finished the whole minute ahead of everyone. But at the bottom of the climb of Arkalis, the control is all being made by the man in the white jersey, Jan Ulrich. Well, he's constantly looked out for Bjorn Aris and he still appears to be looking for him now. He's just started the last climb up to the finish and they are just in front of Jan Ulrich. And Ulrich looks to me as though he can contain his enthusiasm no longer because I, and Varenk is getting, getting on turns and he needs to because Ulrich now is waiting for no one. He seems to have decided that Bjorn Aris has to be cut adrift. Well, there's Fincato, he's going backwards and here comes the little man with the big heart, Marco Pantani has realised it's time to try and get on terms. He's come right up to Richard Varenk on this final climb. The Danish flag on the right is looking a little bit tarnished right now because Rees is again in difficulty. Well, Rees certainly cannot respond to any of these attacks. In fact, the attack originated at the bottom of the climb by Richard Virenk, currently in second position. But then all of a sudden, the man with the white jersey of the champion of Germany just accelerated and went away on his own. And now the last man in front of him, Jean-Philippe Dojois, and very soon I think he too will be history. Well, he took the race to the rest, but I'm afraid he's paid the price. He took a good look across at Jan Ulrich, and if, if he took a good look at his face, he can see this man is not under pressure at all. Ulrich has waited as much as he could yesterday. He was definitely under the command of Bjorn Reese. Today, I guess he's realized that Reese hasn't quite got the legs of 1996. This young man could be racing to the yellow jersey now, and he's got to defend that for an awful long time if he wants to win the Tour de France. Well, these two riders are supposed to be climbers. They must be able to do something against the onslaught of Jan Ulrich. The time gap at the moment, 25 seconds to these two riders. And in fact, Bjarne Aris is 45 seconds down on his own teammate, Jan Ulrich. That day, a new star was born. There were ups and downs throughout the rest of the tour. But finally, Ulrich won with over nine minutes margin. 
He also became the youngest champion after the war. Bernard Hinault stated that the new era of cycling began and Jan Uri will dominate for 7 or 8 years. Now let's have a look at the Mount Rushmore of power and height where Jan Ulrich positioned himself in 1997. The chart stretches from 1989 till 2001 and is based on publication from Polar France, performed by two French scientists, Antoine Voyer and Frédéric Portolet. The method he used was to calculate power output, given the riding time, the mass of the rider plus equipment, and then all the factors that are typically used. Rolling resistance, frontal surface area, air density, gravity and speed. The estimation of power output takes into account final climbs of each mountain stage and then average them for given year. Jan Ulrich reached around 6.3 watts per kilogram, while Ries and Pantani 6.5 and 6.6 .6 watts per kilogram in neighboring years, respectively. It's clear all those guys, including Miguel in the Rhine, reached the level of fitness not possible for predecessors. But keep in mind, Jan Ulrich was only 22 years old and his dope prime was still to come. The significant drop in 1999 can be explained by Festina scandal and kind of fear in doped peloton caused by frequent police controls. Although I haven't calculations made with the same methodology, I just put Lance Armstrong estimated power from one climb in 2004. We could imagine Ulrich progression would have been similar to Lance Armstrong in upcoming years. talented rider in the group and so having said that I mean it's it's obvious that he's always a favorite you know he, he's he's his only problem is sometimes uh, sometimes he's been inconsistent with his preparation or with his uh, his off-season activities but you know if he shows up to the Tour de France in shape then he's... as Bernie predicted Jan Ulrich was the main contender to win Tour de France in upcoming years but it was Lance Armstrong who had always final love. The closest confrontation happened in 2003, where Jan Ulrich ended up with just 61 seconds lost to Lance. From this perspective, their rivalry might look unequal, but in reality, being second to Lance for three times is still an amazing result, not mentioning many single stage wins. With no doubt, those two riders were dominating the tour between 2000 and 2005. On the other hand, Jan Ulrich was better in time trial during Olympic Games, in Sydney winning gold medal while Lance took bronze. Many years later, Armstrong said, Nobody scared me, motivated me. The other guys, no disrespect to them, they didn't get me up early. <laughs> 